Um, so I have the pleasure of introducing myself today. <laughs> Though I think most of you know me, I know most of you, so uh, it's always good. Um, I'm Andre Vanderhoek. I'm the chair of the Department of Informatics, um, of which I believe just about everybody in the room is a member, one way or the other. Um, it is tradition that I give this annual state of the department talk. Um, it's always a good thing to do. It's always a pain in my neck because I'm always up late at night the night before trying to put the slides together. Um, but then it's always a very fun activity too because I get to retrospect on all the stuff that has happened. And it turns out that so many good things happen, it's actually hard to summarize them in a set of slides like this one. Um, so the, you know, the, the outline will be, we're gonna talk a little bit about campus and school news, not too much. I'm um, gonna talk a little bit about department news, what's happening. I always like to celebrate the kinds of things that have happened, so accomplishments, um, and what do I see for the year ahead um, is going to be important for the department. Okay? So I, those of you who have been here before, you know I like to show some numbers um, and, and some things. So interestingly, I wanted to start with students and UCI and student numbers. So we had 85,000 people apply last year to do an undergraduate degree here, which, which is an incredible number. Um, and it's actually among the top 10 universities in the world, or, or in the US, in terms of numbers. I don't always think it's a good thing that that many people are applying um, or want to come to one university. Out of those, actually 30,000 are accepted, and about 6,000 um, show up to our campus, actually almost 7,000 now. Then there were also almost 20,000 transfer applicants, out of which one out of every two is actually accepted, um, and about 3,000 show up. Um, so what does it mean for this fall? It means we have about almost 35,000 students on campus, um, about 29,000 undergraduates, and then about four to five, four to 5,000 graduate students on the campus. So that's a, that's a big growing number. For quite a while, it was 28, 29. Um, the campus has been picking up additional students. Um, and you'll see how some of that actually plays out in the classes that you'll be, you'll be part of. Um, campus rankings. Rankings are always a little bit funny because um, anybody can put together a set of rankings as they wish. And, you know, depending on what criteria they, they use, you're number one, you're number 10, you're number 712, it, it varies. Um, but UCI gets a number of these rankings done by other institutions and by, by you know, the, the New York Times and others that I actually kind of care about. You know, the number one university doing the most for the American dream. Um, so this is for people who are of a particular economic demographic, poor demographic, and the university helping them achieve um, a higher level demographic for themselves. And we are seen as the number one university who actually takes the students in, uh, helps them through, helps them through with grants, Pell Grants, and other kinds of things, um, and helps them come out. That, that's actually quite an incredible recognition. Number seven in the nation for awarding bachelor's degrees to minority students. Um, you wouldn't think of it right away, but one of the things we know, UCI is now a Hispanic serving institution, which means 25% of our students are from Hispanic origin. Um, and that is still a minority um, demographic. Number nine, public university in the US that just came out, US World of News Report. You know, we're part of the University of California system. Number one is, I think, one of our colleagues. Number two is one of our colleagues. Number seven is one of our colleagues. We're, we're all over the number 10. Um, but nonetheless, it says our university as a whole, the University of California, um, is doing incredibly well as a public university, uh, at least in the, the public eye. Number five, Pest Public University for Money Magazine, so you can see they can rank them differently. Um, this is a new one, number two nationally in the Golden Age University ranking. Now, what's the Golden Age University ranking? Well, we used to have this ranking that came out from the Times Higher Education that was all the universities under 50. Okay. And I touted that for a little while, and I said, yes, we're 50. And of course, we turned 51. Um, and no longer were we the number one university out of 50 years old. But to hell and lo and below, they have a golden age university, which, is, which actually is sort of 35 to 65 years old. Um, and so, so we're number two in there. So there you go. And then the top 10 coolest school eight years in the running, which looks at sustainability. So it, it looks at um, how sustainable is the campus building its practices. And, and I think everybody. Um, has seen or is experiencing all the solar panels going up and all sorts of other initiatives on campus. Um, and again, the, the, that's a ranking I care about, right? As a university, we need to set an example, um, and I think we're doing that in a number of different ways. Um, other things at the campus level, I think if you didn't see this, you should have seen it, because um, it was plastered all over the place. 
Um, just a couple of weeks ago, there's the announcement of a $200 million gift towards an integrated health um, initiative that actually names a College of Health Sciences here on campus. Um, it's incredible in terms of its number. It's the seventh largest gift to a public university in the United States. Um, and I just wanted to highlight it because if you look at my next slide, um, there's another gift, actually by the same folks, um, believe it or not, that's $30 million towards a convergent science building. You go, and so why is this map up here? Um, the map is up here because this is where Brent Hall is. That's the engineering center. This is the beloved faculty member parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's going to happen at the beloved faculty member parking lot. <laughs> That's, of course, where the new building is going to be built. Um, so, um, and given that there's no mock-up of what the building is actually looking like, I decided that would use the parking lot where it's actually going to go. Um, and these, these two gifts, they're coming from one couple. Um, but then just last year, there was also a $40 million gift to name the School of Nursing um, and to establish a School of Nursing. And what that says to me is that the campus climate, as compared to 10 years ago or 15 years ago when I joined, has changed significantly. These things are happening, and they're not happening by accident, right? It's not like somebody walks by and trips over and goes, whoops, here's a check for $200 million. It doesn't happen that way. It's a lot of hard work on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the part of the administration. Um, it's a lot of conversations. It's a lot of appreciation by the people who write checks like this. Um, and that ongoing relationship is being nurtured and is being developed. Um, and we will all benefit from that in one way or another. So, so incredibly thankful, but also at the same time showing that as a university, we're still moving up in the way we, we do our business. OK. Esports, I had this exact same slide up last year. Um, and I said, look, we have an esports arena. We still have an esports arena. And then maybe that's an accomplishment in and of itself. Um, but what I want to highlight is the momentum that is behind it. Okay? It is continuously still in the news, um, our esports arena, our esports teams. Um, it is a part of the higher level administration conversations. Sometimes in great ways, look at what we're doing. Sometimes in not so great ways. It's like the diversity and equity issue that is in esports is something that this campus needs to address one way or another. Um, but there's momentum, and, and the campus is, is making use of that. This one. Don't know who saw this one. Um, this came out just a couple of days ago, right? So there's always lots of good things that happen on campus. But one of the things you also need to know about your campus is who are your students? What's going on? Um, and it turns out that our campus, like many other campuses, has a number of students who are struggling to put food on the table. Okay? Um, and so this is the new UCI food pantry. It's 1,800 square feet. Um, it does not just give out free food, but it gives, gives cooking lessons and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and it shows you the kind of reply that the campus has to what happens in the demographic of students that we serve, right? So if we do serve, indeed, students who are from impoverished conditions, um, this is one of the ways in which we can help them. And I just wanted to highlight that you might have students, if you're a TA or if you're a faculty member, you might have students from this demographic in your class. And they might be struggling or they might be, um, you know, coming to you and saying, hey, here's, here's something that I'm really struggling with or something that, that's, that's up. Um, these are the kinds of resources that UCI has for those kinds of situations. So just for you to be aware, because um, you're going to be teaching these students, um, is, is an important part. And this is just one resource, right? There's lots of other resources as well um, that you can come talk to us about, or to, to me, or to Vice Chair, or whatever. OK. Um, then on to the school. School has a new dean. I had Mario's. We call him Dean Mario's. Um, that's the big picture on the left. Um, so we had this picture up last year because it, it was actually in the books that he was going to join us. He has now joined us as of January 1st, um, has taken the school by the helm, is here 24-7 if he's not traveling to other kinds of places, um, and really building momentum for the school in a lot of good ways. Um, one of those ways has been to actually take two of my faculty members away from my department, so I'm less happy about that, but it's a good thing. Um, both are serving as associate dean. So Paul Durst is serving as associate dean for research. Um, David Retmiles is serving as associate dean for faculty affairs, um, which means um, that they're contributing to the leadership of the school. Um, they're helping the school reorganize itself in certain ways, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you see them at work, you know, pat them on the back or, or tell them good stuff. Um, so what's happening in the school? Um, Here is the new and enhanced direction. So some stuff is new, some stuff is continuing of, of where we were. Um, there's a major faculty hiring initiative going on, and you'll see a little bit later what that means um, for our department. Um, but there's going to be quite a bit of hiring across the school, across all of the three departments. So school already is at 79, right, Carrie, faculty members? 
Um, the goal is to be at least 100, I believe, in the next five years. So that, that's growth along the way. There's an, ex oops, there's an expanded communications office. Um, communications, especially in this day and age, is very important for a school like ours. Um, so where that used to be one person running the show and then maybe two, um, there's now three, four people actually running this. And so as you have news, and this is what I want to share with everybody, right? If, if there's a particular fellowship that you get, or if there's a particular important paper that you publish, or a book that you publish, or something really creative that happens in your class, you know, let them know. They, they love putting things out in tweets. They love putting things out in newsletters and et cetera. They like especially featuring students, okay? People get really bored of faculty member stories. So and so got another grant. So and so got another grant. So and so got another paper. Um, lots of interesting things happen amongst the students, right? You might have a fantastic game night where lots of people showed up, um, games got played, and the national champion got crowned. Who knows, right? Um, so stuff like that. Let them know. Let them know what's happening. You can let me know. Um, I will forward it on. No problem. Corporate partners, um, the dean is putting in a lot of effort into building more relationships with the industry around. Um, so both in terms of sponsoring us, in terms of um, recruiting our students and, and other kinds of things. Alumni relations, this is always the thing that the, the, the university and the school is looking at, building the alumni relationship, building a funding pipeline. Um, and then there will be a school website redesign um, that's slowly but surely going on the way which is an important part of, of how we should actually portray ourselves. The department has a decent website. It also needs to be updated. I know that. Um, but the school's website is a lot older. Um, it definitely needs to be updated a lot more. There's some informal directives that we've gotten from the dean. Um, so pay attention to the number of PhD students per faculty member. Pay attention to the number of student credit hours per faculty member. Pay attention to the expenditures per faculty hour per, per faculty member. For, this is more for the faculty members in the audience <laughs> as opposed to the students. Um, but basically, this is good news for the students because it says we want to have PhD students. Um, we want to have them help us teach. And we want to make sure that they're funded. Um, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one of, one of the things that I have to deal with as chair. We'll talk more to the individual faculty about uh, where the faculty is at large. In terms of program updates across the school, not necessarily in our department, I'll get to those in a little bit. There now is a Master of Computer Science that's starting this year. It's got about 100 students um, coming in. Um, and there's also a Master of Data Science that's going to be developed between uh, the Department of Statistics um, and the Department of Computer Science. And that's, good. that's complementing one master's program that, master program that we already have um, and the, a second one that we're putting forward. So if you have friends, who are interested in data science or computer science, you can point them to these kinds of uh, programs. All right, so campus undergraduate admissions. I said, you know, 85,000 students. Um, where do they actually all go? Well, in red, I've highlighted information in computer science. And one of the things that's, that's quite interesting is if you look at the, the numbers before, the numbers in parentheses are last year's numbers, I should say that. Um, and so we got 472 freshmen this year as opposed to 558. That's actually by design, because last year uh, we got overrun with students, even though we wanted some fewer. There were many, many more that the campus admitted. So the school asked, could you please lay off a little bit, because our classes are creaking. Um, but then, of course, the compensation happened right at the transfer level. We got 375 transfer students coming into the school as a whole, which is, which is a huge number. Um, and that actually puts us, I believe, as the third largest at the transfer level. And I think one, two, uh, three, or and like the fourth or fifth largest across campus at the freshman level. Um, for a long time, about six, seven, eight years ago, the school was one of the smallest. Um, so that has changed dramatically. Other school news. So as a result of all these students coming aboard, the enrollments are at actually an all-time record. There's over 3,000 undergraduates. So for those of you who are TAing or being readers, um, that's where you'll experience that. Right? So you might actually be TAing or reading. Uh, be a reader for a class of 200 or, or 250 or 150 students. You might actually even be teaching a class with several hundred students in it. Okay. Um, so new faculty and staff, okay, so across all three departments, new faculty and staff um, have joined. And then there's also a trial with some undergraduate readers, just because there's so many students um, and we don't have enough graduate students at times. So trying out um, using undergraduate readers in the process. So that's campus and school. Let me talk a little bit about the department itself and what's happening there. Um, this is always my favorite slide. 
Um, new faculty in the department. So we have four new faculty members in the department. Uh, Bonnie Ruber, Constance Steinkuhler, Katie Salen, Kurt Squire. Um, there are three of them are actually in this room, so if you could maybe wave your hand just ever so slightly. I think most of you know that you're here. Welcome. We're very, very excited. Uh, worked on that for a little while, but we're super glad that we actually pulled it off and that you're here and, and contributing to everything that we're doing. Very, very thankful. Um, retirements, that happens on the other side, you know, when, once you're done. So Gary and Judy Olson did retire this past year. Um, doesn't mean they're inactive. Okay, so you'll see in some of the, the, the subsequent slides, um, Judy is still supervising somebody from the School of Education, and Gary is still involved in a bunch of other kinds of things. So um, they're still around, and they're a great resource. Um, if anybody ever needs mentoring about academic careers, being a faculty member, being a professor, being all sorts of different things, um, walk into their office because they'll, they'll gladly give you lots of wisdom. Vice chairs, that has changed compared to last year. So uh, David Kay could not make it today, but he's the new vice chair for undergraduate affairs. And then hiding all the way in the back corner is your favorite person. <laughs> <laughs> I should be your favorite person. That's right. If, <laughs> I was going to get to that. <laughs> if she's not, she should be. Uh, so it's Melissa Masmanian. Um, she's our vice chair for graduate affairs. So any sort of questions that you have about graduate life, uh, about your classes, about working with your advisor, um, she's the one to talk to. We especially like it if you come to her office and say, it's going swimmingly with my advisor and I'm having a great time. Um, of course, sometimes that's not the case. Um, then you should especially not hesitate to come talk to us. Okay? Um, I say this message every single time. Many, many problems can be avoided or at least reduced in size if you reach out to us early. Um, and so take that to heart. It is not too difficult to shoot an email to the vice chair or me um, and say, hey, this is going on in my life. How should I deal with that? And whether that's your course schedule, or whether that's personal situations, or working with your advisor, um, we will gladly help you um, as best as we can. Right? Yes. OK. <laughs> I, I also, if your new graduate students will be meeting on Monday, and I will be following up with an email about that. I'm sorry I missed your orientation. I was out of town last yep. week. Yep. But we had a lovely lunch. I heard. <laughs> now my last announcement is I'm also the decade mentor, which means that it's, a, it's a similar role but slightly different. And that as a decade mentor, my job is to make sure that we keep a positive climate for graduate students as well. So you can come to me with any questions about culture and climate that are you know, less, not just the transactional questions about your coursework and stuff like that. So I'm yeah. open for all of that. And any suggestions on how to make it better? That's we'll, true. We'll always yeah, take. We'll always, always take. Always so, welcome. Yeah. Um, department staff, department staff has grown. Um, I'll have to apologize for some of the pictures that I used here and there because I like to scrape them at like 12.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, and so when your picture is up here, that meant I found it somewhere using Google. Um, but, you know, Julio, you're in the back over there. Uh, department assistant, faculty assistant. We have Susie, you're also over here. And then we have Adriana who is right there, thank you. She's now split between the Master of HCI and Design program and being a faculty assistant, so she's wearing two hats. Um, we have Marty Beach as department manager, and Marty is probably managing the department downstairs. Um, <laughs> Steve, you're here, right? Where are you? Right there, sitting incognito with the hat on. Um, he is the uh, director, what is it? Co director of the HCID program, right? Program director. Program director of the Master of HCID, uh, HCI and Design program, um, which I'll talk a lot more about. Um, and when you hear me say glowing things, it's partly because of all the efforts that he's been putting in. Um, and then for the faculty, there's also Sue Drost, whose picture I could not find on the internet anywhere. She's um, <laughs> so good for her, right? Good for her. <laughs> And, and I'm pretty good at finding stuff on the internet. You should, you should know that. Um, so she, she is helping a lot with personnel cases and other kinds of things of, of concern to faculty. Um, but this used to, for the longest time, be three people. Okay, so we're very fortunate that, that as a department we've been able to grow our staff um, and be able to actually you know, recruit outstanding staff, actually, that help us do what we need to do. So we're just very glad you're here. Um, and for many of you, uh, you'll be often interacting with them. And, and the same kind of rule goes as we had with Melissa. If you're going to go travel, if you need to purchase something, if you want to go out to lunch, um, go talk to them first. <coughs> the university actually has a bunch of rules about what's allowed and what's not allowed. 
um, they're the keepers of those rules and, and go talk to them if there's something um, that, you, that you just don't know or something that you're, you're curious about or even before this might be your first travel, um, you're a new student, your first travel as a PhD student, then you definitely, before you book and do some, some other things, you should go talk to them um, because that avoids trouble later on. All right. Um, other things that are happening at the curricular level, this is a picture from last year. Um, this was the inaugural class of the Master of HCI in Design, um, which is a what's called self-supporting master's program. It had 22 students in it, and we're really happy to be able to put this picture in front of you two weeks later or two weeks ago, um, where all 22 actually graduated. So it's an accelerated master's program. It's uh, about a year, and um, the first cohort got through. All of them did. Um, all but three, I think, or is it now two, Steve? Uh, yeah, it's, it's still three? Three working on two. Still working on two. Um, already have jobs um, out of this program and have been placed in, in stuff, in, in positions. And this is the next cohort. Um, 28 of them are coming in this year. So we're slowly growing this program. The whole intention of this particular program is to be a high touch, high quality, high impact kind of program. And uh, it, it's serving a population of students that we didn't previously serve. Um, I give some uh, highlights to it because partly uh, the program is new, uh, but partly also the program is beneficial in other ways to the department and, and it's working out the way it's supposed to be. All right, we're also putting forward a Master of Software Engineering. Um, there is a Master's of Software Engineering. That one is more research oriented. Um, this one is gonna be even more oriented towards industry. It's approved by the campus. It's now at the University of California Office of the President, which means it's what we call up in Oakland which also means we have no idea until we hear when it's actually approved. Um, so it's gonna take us a little while, but the planned start is for fall 2008, so we have a work cut out for us. Hiring, um, what are we gonna be looking forward in terms of hiring in the department at the faculty level? So we've been doing a bunch of hiring in these past couple of years. Um, we're happy to announce that we're gonna be, hopefully, continuing it along all of these paths. So there's gonna be one or two hires in cybersecurity, um, there's a joint call with the Department of Computer Science. Um, it depends who applies and which department they like to be in, um, depending if they're on the policy level, if they're on the hardcore kind of cryptography side, or if they're somewhere in the middle. Um, it depends where they shake out which department they're gonna join. Uh, but nonetheless, from a school perspective, it's great that we're gonna have two people joining us in this, in this critical area, as we all know. Um, two hires in HCI. Um, this one I'm particularly excited about because I've been beaten over the head while I've been hiding, hiring some games people that what is happening with HCI. I've always said be patient, be patient, be patient, and sure enough this year we were able to hire two people um, in this area, so two new faculty members. One hire in um, science and technology studies, um, another area of importance to the department. One hire in software engineering, and notice that one says awaiting approval. I have verbal approval, but I gotta make sure that I get the full approval for that. Um, and then there's also gonna be one with a question mark that might be half, one, we don't know for sure yet, hire um, as a professor of teaching, which is somebody who's gonna help the mission. You're saying one? Thank you, it's gonna be one, there you go. Let me erase the question mark, then it's on paper and <coughs> it's all good. So that's a lot of hiring, okay? That's a lot of interviews that we're going to do. Um, we're gonna be looking towards some of you, the grad students, to help us in recruiting these folks, okay? so. They're gonna be professors, but many of them are grad students like yourself as we speak. Um, and so you have a couple of opportunities to help us and actually be part of this. So one is come to the talk. Okay, so you at some point yourself might be going up for an academic position. Seeing the talks of other people coming through in the department can be tremendously enlightening, okay? There are times that the faculty is sitting in the room and about five minutes into the talk knows that this person is not gonna get hired. Those are sad interviews. We're not happy that they happen. They happen every once in a while. There's also times that after 10 minutes, we know that this person probably is gonna get an offer. Um, and we know that just because of how they're conducting themselves, what they're telling us, how they're operating. Um, but there's also, and most of the time, it's actually sort of in the middle. We gotta get to know this person through the one-on-one -on -one interviews, through the, through the other kinds of uh, engagements. And that's actually where the second bit that we rely on you on. So the first bit is come to the talk and actually learn for yourself. Um, what those talks are like. But then second, actually um, join us for one of the lunches with some of the faculty that are coming through. Um, you often are sort of a little truth serum. 
Okay? We faculty are very, very good about saying it's a wonderful place. We all get along. It's fantastic. You know, we're the great people <laughs> and you should join us here. But it is. Um, and it is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so if you say anything else, <laughs> no more lunches for you. Um, <laughs> but actually many faculty or prospective faculty have a very good way of talking to the graduate students and learning what the graduate students' perspectives are. And generally they align. Um, and actually, we as a department do a very good job of you telling what your, what your life is like. Um, but I've been in interviews at other places, other people have been in interviews at other places, where the faculty tell you one thing and the students tell you another thing. That's often a very big red herring. Um, now, no students go to lunch, that's also a big red herring. So with this many people that we want to hire, you know, do each of these positions times three, we're probably going to look at 15, 16, 17 people that we're going to bring in. Um, and we need your help in convincing them that we are the best place for them and not University of Washington or Georgia Tech or Berkeley or any of the other places. We want all these people to come here. Um, so, so please help us. Please join us. Um, this is a tremendous opportunity for our department to make another big leap forward um, in terms of you know, the number and the caliber of people that are here. Um, and so we just need your help in, in pulling that off. Because, of course, I want to hire them all next year. Um, okay, school undergraduate admissions. This one is always the most interesting slide. Um, it is the different majors that the school has. Highlighted in red are the ones that the informatics department more or less takes care of. Um, so, and you can see immediately, this is the number of freshmen. So 27 freshmen in software engineering, four freshmen in informatics, 36 in computer game science, and 18 in business information management. Okay. Um, and then six transfer students in business information management, 17 in computer game science, 14 and 13 in the other two. Very small numbers. And especially when you look at computer science, where we have 288 freshmen and 303 transfer students. This is not surprising. Um, this happens to us almost every year, that the numbers of a freshmen who recognize the term informatics, because they're coming from high school, they just don't know. Um, and computer game science, their parents tell them that, mm, you know, that's just gaming, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, and then software engineering, they go, yeah, I got an uncle or an aunt, and they actually are a software engineer, so that, that's possibly okay for you to do it as opposed to computer science. Um, and so once they're here, we often see a bunch of the students migrating into our degree program. So th this is, these numbers, I'd like to change them, um, but the numbers have been like that for many years, and, and, and you know, we just wait until they're here and see what they're doing. Because when you look at the actual number of majors, um, so informatics is at 200 majors right now, um, software engineering at 185, growing still, computer game science at 241, and business information management at 123. So actually, at this point, the computer <coughs> game science program for our department is the largest major that's there. Um, interestingly enough, if you look at CS, 1,700. Okay. That's an enormous number. And we see many of them in our courses, um, but we do have to look to our neighbors and go, wow, that, that is a lot of students that you guys are taking care of. Um, and so um, that is a bigger number than in many ways the school actually can handle. So that's why a bunch of faculty positions are also going to go to CS to, to deal with that. Okay. Um, but we have a healthy population of undergrads um, going around. At, uh, and then you can also see in terms of the graduating numbers. Um, so. Uh, 425 graduating CS majors, 77 informatics this past year, 38 software engineering, 47 in computer game science. So um, the numbers grow compared to what we see at the entry point, um, but I'd like to see them a little bit bigger, especially in comparison to computer science. At the graduate level, the informatics program has 45 PhD students and five master students. Master of NCI is at um, has 22. 17 PhD students in software engineering and 19 master students. And then CS, again, is 137 PhD students and some 80 master students. So, so you can see sort of the various proportions that exist uh, among the school. This is about, uh, at the moment, 62 PhD students. Uh, we've been consciously trying to grow the population a little bit because if we have new faculty, there is new capacity. So I expect it to go up in the upcoming years again. Um, and again, you can help us there. Right? We're going to be recruiting a new set of PhD students. There's grad visit day, all those kinds of things. The more you tell them what a wonderful place this is, if you believe that, um, you, should, you should join us in helping. Um, and this is just the number of how many PhDs we tend to graduate. It's a relatively small number each year, although then sometimes there's a little bump. So last year we had 12, this year we have eight. Um, and so you know, these are just 
a number that, that shows you that, you know, we're not only taking the PhD students in, but we actually do finish, okay? So <laughs> there's some hope at the end of, uh, end of the journey here. Okay, so let's switch a little bit to accomplishments. Okay, so this is, this is just gonna be a bunch of pictures and then I talk about the pictures, okay? So this is Jeff. Um, Jeff Bucker was named Chancellor's Professor on this campus, okay? So the campus has a number of levels of recognition um, and one of those levels is you are a, a Chancellor's Professor, which means you have a big medal that you wear at the PhD ceremonies, a bunch of other things, but it means you have been recognized for the outstanding research and contributions that you've been ma making to the field. And Jeff is actually our third uh, person to be that. So Paul Durris is one, Dick Taylor is one, um, and then Jeff is now as well. Um, Gloria, uh, she, and I, every once in a while I have to look, because when you put them together at 12.30, you don't always remember. Um, so she got recognized by the Kai Academy. Um, so the Kai Academy is, is the ACM organization that looks over HCI research. Um, she was recognized as a member of the Kai Academy now. She was awarded that membership. She's the fifth person in our department, or sixth person now, um, that has been recognized as such. And again, that's only by nomination. And then there's a committee that looks at that and they say, oh, no, this person isn't senior enough, or actually that's not the right term. This person hasn't had enough impact in their field, so they need to wait a little while. But clearly, um, we're, we have a stellar faculty um, in, this, in this area. Here's the trio of new faculty. Um, there is a Higher Education Video Game Alliance, um, which awarded the inaugural um, fellows this past year. So they awarded 30 researchers um, fellow, and three of them are in our department, which is phenomenal, because those are the three, is the highest number across any of the departments ac um, across the world. Um, and they're, they're really three people that, that deserve, um, deserve that recognition. I should mention also Constance is even a founding fellow, um, one of just five. Um, and what that shows you is that um, that's the kind of recognition that, um, that your colleagues have for you, right? So you do your work and then somebody else actually nominates you and somebody else steps up for you and says, this person deserves because they have done this kind of great work. Um, Krista Lopes um, what got the AITO Test of Time Award. Um, she wrote a paper in 1997 um, on aspect-oriented programming, which is a particular form of programming. Um, that paper was recognized 20 years later uh, for the impact that it had. Um, and that, that's always an important kind of recognition because it says, out of all these papers that were published 20 years ago, that's the one that we believe had the most impact. Um, and just think about that. You know, there's a lot of people doing research in these kinds of areas. Um, the same award was bestowed, actually, but in a different field. So this is the ACM Six Off um, Impact Award on Dick Taylor and Roy Fielding. So that's Dick Taylor. That's not Roy Fielding. Um, <laughs> that that is actually a a other student of Dick's, a former student of Dick's, who is now at USC and is actually the chair of ACM Six Off. Um, but it's also again, it's an impact paper for, in this case, all the foundations of the World Wide Web. Um, and so the HTTP protocol and other kinds of things, they are described in this particular paper, how it was designed, what the design implications are. And then um, I think Constance, you again, um, Games for Change got recognized at, with the Vanguard Award, I believe, Vanguard Award, um, which is significant work as mentors, advocates, and champions of the next generation of game creators. Um, and so again, the role you play in the community is not just being a researcher putting your papers out, but there's actually standing up, transitioning some of the materials, being an advocate in the community, and all those other kinds of things. You can do that as a faculty member, but you can even do some of that as a graduate student. You could try to organize a workshop at CAI. Um, you could try to write a little um, interactions paper, all sorts of different ways for you to actually step up, okay? Um, Jim is here, Jillian is here, Melissa is here. These are the Dean's Awards. Every year the Dean awards an award for research, for teaching, for service, and a bunch of, bunch of other factors across the whole school. Um, last year, Jillian, Jim, and Melissa each were recipients um, of various ones of these awards. And I'm trying to even remember which one it was. Jim, was yours undergrad teaching? Undergrad. I think so. Was yours graduate mentoring? Graduate mentoring. Graduate mentoring. Then Jillian's was for research, mid-career research, I think. So um, she just shows you as a department we're doing really, really good stuff. Um, labs. Okay, so with the addition of new faculty, um, there's also some new labs that are coming on board. Okay, and so this is the high lab, which is the health and information lab. Kai, uh, Kai Zeng, uh, Kai Zeng, yeah, um, and Yunnan run that. 
um, just for you to know, right? You might not do health and information, um, but if somebody walks down the hallways or you are TAing a course and the undergrad says, hey, I'm really interested in health stuff, you say, we got a lab that just does that. I can put you in touch with a grad student, I can put you in touch with a faculty member um, if you want to do some undergraduate research, for instance. So, so just to be aware of it, um, and the lab is doing great. It's actually up on this floor, um, on the sixth floor, it's not on the fifth floor because we kind of outgrew our space down there. Um, so every once in a while, walk up and say hi to your colleagues here as well. Um, there's a new connected learning lab, which Mimi Ito, and you're in the back hiding, I saw. Yes, there you go, um, is, is spearheading, um, which is an outflow of digital media um, and learning, a large um, effort that she led for almost 10 years. Um, again, be aware that there's lots of interesting things happening. You should actually visit this page one day. Um, there's so much interesting stuff that goes on just in the learning space for kids that are a lot younger than us. Um, but nonetheless, have a profound digital experience. Um, and you should, you should just take a look. There's, there's cool stuff happening. I purposely did not put the games lab up yet. We're still figuring out how the games lab is shaking out. Um, but it's pretty clear that there's a game space being created on the fifth floor. Um, we're working with all the students, working with the faculty to get people spots, to create a space that is, that is inviting, exciting, um, and all these other kinds of things. Um, each year, somehow, our faculty like to write books, as if writing a paper isn't hard enough. Um, we like to write 200 page, 300 page kind of things. Um, and so, this is a book by Bonnie Nardi um, about heteromation, which really looks at the economics of information technology. Um, Bonnie Ruberg wrote a book on queer game studies, actually edited a book. She wrote some chapters in it, but then had lots of contributions from others as well. Paul Durish wrote a book on the bits, the stuff, or the, the stuff of bits, um, which looks a lot at materiality of information. What does it mean for um, computer systems and technology to actually limit and enable uh, some parts of our digital society? And there's one more, which is Aaron Jamel. He put together a special issue on analog game studies. And, and I just show you these few, just to show you how different they are, right? It's about the economics that are there. It's about queer game studies, then it's about the stuff of bits, and then we have something about analog studies. Okay? So not even digital games here, it's just complete analog games. Um, and this is just a subset of the kind of things that we do in the department. It's actually what makes the department, the department is how interdisciplinary it is. Three of our students, former students I should say, um, were selected by the ACM to be part of what's called the Future of Computing Academy. So many of these professional organizations, they're run by faculty, um, and they're run by researchers who've been out of the, you know, out of the PhD level experience for a long time. So it's more the senior people that run that. Um, the ACM recognized that junior people who just got their PhD and are not too far out actually have something to say as well and often have some of the more creative ideas. Um, and so they put together a group of, I think, about 30 recent PhDs um, that they wanted the input from what they believe the future of computing is. And so this is Julia Haynes, Sung Young Park, um, and Julie Williamson. All three of them are alumni of our department. So that's 10% of that group is coming from right here, which is, which is just pretty awesome. And Julie actually was one of the very, very first undergraduates we had in the informatics <coughs> department. Lives in Glasgow now. Don't know why it rains there. Um, so <laughs> here is uh, Chris. Chris, I told you I would have your picture in here. You're right there. Um, <laughs> so, and we also have Kathy and Rinland. Um both of them are ARCS recipients. So ARCS is the Achievement Awards for College Scientists uh, reward. If you see this call coming by, um, you should pay attention to it. It's, it's a group of people um, who like to reward research. Um, they often like to reward women in research, but it's not exclusively so. Um, but it's a very nice monetary reward and recognition for the kinds of things that you do. So it's very competitive. Um, but nonetheless, there were two of the informatics scholars who received that and with, with great recognition to everything you did. And then I think I also wrote down that um, Catherine also got the UCI Public Impact Fellow as well, which is yet another fellow uh, recognition on campus of distinction because they pick just very few people across the various schools. So motto of the story for some of this is we like to nominate you for stuff. It is good. It's good for us because it makes us look good on campus. People know what the Department of Informatics is about. But it's also really good for you, right, for your careers. If you are eligible for a fellowship, if you're eligible for an award, 
you should not be shy going to talk to your advisor and say, do you think I could be qualified for this award? Do you think I'm at the right level? And sometimes we will say, eh, not yet. Sometimes we will say, yes, now is exactly the right time. Or sometimes we'll say, eh, you're a little late, we'll try anyways, right? Um, but we like it, it's important. Um, and actually, both the vice chair and I will help, right? You can also come to us and say, I'd like to think about this particular fellowship. And we will actually coach you in your letters. We will coach your advisors in their letters if we need to, okay? We, we've done that as well. You wanted to say something or you were just waving? I said I'll help. Okay, cool. <laughs> you agree. Um, and this is actually interesting. These are some of our undergrads in the computer game science major. Um, this is the uh, IEEE game sig that had a competition um, across all sorts of local uh, colleges. This team won first place, that team won second place. Okay? And that is actually against all of the other local colleges there. And we like that. Um, and they built some interesting games. Um, selfie Surf was actually one of them. Um, so you made a face, you took a selfie, and then the next person had to explain what that face was about. And then you gave the phone to the next person who then made a new, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's kind of the variant of, you know, you, you whisper a word in the, the ear of the next person that goes around um, and something completely different comes, comes back. All right, great things are happening. This one is actually one of my favorites. Um, we have these robots on our floor. Um, so what, what this is, is it's Ju Judy Olson, who, as I said, she's retired, but she's still active. She's working with a graduate student from the Department of Education. Um, and the department and the grad students actually spending a lot of time in our, our place. We have some of these robots. The whole goal is to let kids participate in class if they cannot. Um, so they might have a particular disease where they can't be exposed to other, other kids, or they might be truly sick for a long time, um, mobile and alert, but not necessarily able to move. Uh, no, not mobile, but alert, does not necessarily be able to move. Um, and so the whole goal is to actually see what are these, these digital ways of attending class. Um, what design needs to be done? Um, what factors play a role? How can we make this a, that as effective as possible? And it turns out it's actually really hard uh, as a design problem. Um, but together, they're, they're getting a lot of traction. They're getting lots of school districts to actually want to do this. Um, and that local expertise is just, just right here. Um, and so again, there's opportunities for a department like ours, where we're so interdisciplinary, to work with people in other schools as well, um, just like she's working with us. Okay, the Master of HCI in Design um, got ranked third in the very first year as a top 50 best value UX design graduate program. I don't know how you did that. Um, I don't know if you even were aware that we were being ranked or not, perhaps not. Um, but we showed up as third amongst a bunch of other ones. And so that's the first year of a program that we're putting together and the reputation is right away there. And that's a reputation we want to maintain. Um, and then last but not least, I think I told you that this past year um, a little bit, um, but Gary and Judy Olson in retiring also have made a significant financial donation to the department, um, especially to promote climate um, and especially to promote climate amongst graduate students. And so this is something that you'll see some of the benefits of um, as, we, as we move forward. And so we're just very thankful for them to do that. Um, they're not here right now. They're at the other alma mater of them, Michigan. They're gonna see some football game or something tomorrow. Um, so what's, what's up for the year ahead? Okay, so pressures and opportunities. Uh, this is almost the same list, I think, as last year. So, so pressures, new faculty. Sounds a little funny. We, we're very excited that they're here. Um, but at the same time, we have to sort of figure out a way that you know, UCI works this way. Um, and the established faculty has these kinds of concerns. So how do we bring the new faculty into the fold to make our department as a whole as, as strong as possible? The enrollments, we see it in our classes. CS sees it even more than us, but nonetheless, we see a lot of students in our classes. Um, how do we deal with that? How do we deal with 250 people and we've got to grade the final exam? The, 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 the faculty member says, I like open-ended questions. Um, that's a lot of grading all of a sudden, okay? Recruiting, I talked about it. We're gonna have a lot of people coming through. Um, and that actually takes a lot of time. It takes two days for each recruitment. Um, and so it takes time to meet them, hang out with them, and um, leave as strong as an impression because we do want them to come here. Um, and then space, and I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Opportunities, there's new faculty, right? In the same way that they're here. Um, that we're working on integrating them in the department. At the same time, it's super exciting that they're here. Um, they're bringing with them a whole bunch of game students, for instance, and other kinds of students in other areas. Um, 
that is an opportunity, and that's an opportunity not to be missed. And I'm, I'm excited for what's coming. The budget is looking up, um, which means I can do some more things than I could do before. Recruiting, of course, is another huge opportunity for us to bring in that many new faculty members, hopefully this year. Um, again, will help us help us establish ourselves as a department. Actually, we are established, but reaffirm as a department to our colleagues that, that we're extremely serious here. Um, and then the students that are here. This is you. Um, we as faculty can do the work alone. Actually, we can do almost no work alone because we do lots of other things most of the time. Um, so guess who gets to do what's, what I would call the interesting, creative, fun, real work, right? Also the hard work underneath of making it all happen. But um, that's you. That's you as students. And so um, every year when there's 15 to 20 new PhD students and a bunch of new master students, um, we want you to be part of this research enterprise. We want you to help us deliver the best classes that we can. We want you to, every once in a while, step up and take a whole class on your own, even though it's a little scary to do that, right? Um, so you're part of what we're trying to build here, and we want you to contribute as much as you can um, and as creative as you can, and, and in a way that, of course, is also good for you and gets you your PhD or gets you your master's degree at the end as well. Um, so hiring, I talked about that. That's a huge opportunity. Um, space is an interesting one. Uh, we did a very significant reorganization last year where we moved a lot of faculty members around. Um, we moved some labs around. Um, that all worked out very well, but if we're going to hire five or six new faculty, um, we are going to have to still look at where are they all going to go, what's going to happen with the lab spaces, um, what's going to happen with our lobby. That's actually my big question to all of you that I'd like to challenge you about. Our lobby on the fifth floor is not too exciting. One of our students put a little artwork in there. You know, if you see the little wooden panel with a little beating, beating heart in there. Um, what can we do with our lobby? What kind of ideas might you have? What would you like to see there? Um, I, I would welcome ideas for that, because I'd like to try, to try to make that a more inviting kind of space. Yeah. I always think we should have a big bucket of Lego there, a table with like a hundred, yes. you know, lots of Legos where people could, could do. But, you know, maybe we can do something like that. But other ideas as well, okay? Um, so ideas are welcome. Please let me know. Not everything that you tell me always will pan out the next week. <laughs> okay? um, I wish, I hope, um, but some things take a little bit longer, but that doesn't mean that those ideas actually go away. Um, many ideas sometimes take a couple of years to really uh, form, uh, but as you have good ideas, please, please share them. Space and otherwise as well, grad student life as well. We, we love to hear from you. Okay. The undergraduate programs, it's time for a good look as faculty and, and uh, at our programs. So the computer game science will undergo a refresh. Um, some discussions amongst the faculty have started there already. The business information management uh, major needs some adjustments. Actually, we designed those adjustments, I think, two years ago. Um, they're still sitting on a table somewhere because we need to coordinate with the School of Business, and somehow that's a very slow form of ping pong. Um, and then informatics refresh. Um, the degree program has existed for 13, 13 years now, 14 years now, something like that. Um, and it's pretty much stayed stable other than the software engineering major exiting out. And so it's kind of time for us to revisit what the informatics major is about and how that is still relevant today and what we can do to update that program. Um, the one that's missing, of course, is software engineering, but that one is just up and running. Um, what we're still going to do with all of the majors, I've asked our vice chair to actually talk to organize a town hall for each of the undergraduate programs, get feedback from all of the students in those majors, and then take that to the faculty. And in the same way, we actually want to reach out to some of our alumni um, of each of these programs and get their input, so that by taking that input, the undergraduate input, and our own thoughts about it, hopefully we can come up with a, a nice refresh of the programs. Okay. Um, this is, again, more for the faculty, but will involve some students in it as well. Um, with the hiring coming up this year, we're sort of completing a major overhaul of the department. Um, often we talked, you know, not everybody agreed how we talked about each other, but it was like, so, well, there's software engineering, there's HCI, and there's a couple of other areas. Um, and we've purposely put the live, work, build umbrella over that so that everything properly fits under there. Um, but we've also purposely built a new, whole new area in the department in games, in digital media and learning, um, so that there's now three areas of strength. Um, we did that by sacrificing some HCI and software engineering temporarily in terms of not hiring there. We're returning to hiring there this year, which sort of completes that cycle of getting a whole new wing to the department and still maintaining strength and hopefully expanding some strength 
in these existing areas. So the question then naturally becomes, okay, so if that's what we are going to be at the end of next year, where do we want to be in five years? It's sort of, these are sort of completing a cycle that we have and what's going to be the next cycle. And so as faculty, we're going to start talking about it and we'll probably involve some graduate students in there as well. Um, this is an interesting one, but I think an important one. Um, with, and I just stole this picture from the front page, um, partly because I uh, wanted to do this anonymous. So there's, there's 34,000 plus new students, okay? And those students all come from different cultures. They come from different backgrounds. They have different sexual orientations. Um, they have different genders, okay? And I just want to call, as department chair, um, a little bit of attention to the issue of gender. Um, we're all very well aware that there's he and she, and that's how many of us have grown up. Um, our department has always been very inclusive from the start, um, always been that way. Um, so we've been open to anybody joining us. Um, we now have some faculty, we have some students who don't necessarily prefer to be called he or she, they prefer to be called they or them. Um, we want to be respectful of that, we want to be inclusive of that, um, and I just wanted to call that attention to all of us, um, that we're sort of sensitive to that, not just amongst ourselves, but also in our classes, okay? The, the student body of UCI itself is very, very different these days. Um, and there is just some sensitivities that are playing out at all these levels. Um, and I just want you to think about that um, for yourself um, and be respectful of everybody that's there. Um, so just wanted to answer that in there. And I'm happy to answer any questions about that as you may have. And with that, of course, I switched to the lightweight topic, which is get your gear. Um, <laughs> so um, there is a Cafe Press website. Um, when you buy stuff there for your students, <coughs> faculty, um, what happens is some of the profits go back to the graduate students. Okay? So it's not something that we earn, it's something that goes to the graduate students. So if you want mugs or other kinds of things. Again, um, this is one of those places where ideas are welcome. You know, this is just one way we, in which we facilitated having some stuff that looks like informatics. Um, if you have other ideas, please let me know. Um, Facebook and Twitter, we like to put our news out there. Um, it's a big factor in how um, graduate students actually pick the grad school that they go to. It's not just the faculty, but it's also the field, the vibe, the relevancy, the currency. So that is your work, right? That's your stuff that's out there. Um, upcoming seminars, this is just the first seminar of many to come this quarter. Um, so please be here next week and the week after and the week after. Plus also for the social hour, of course. Um, so just a plug for that. And with that, that is the end of my talk. Thank you, I'll happily take any questions. I'll take any questions, and if, if there's questions, great. If there's no questions, we're going to go downstairs to the social hour. So, any questions? All right, let's go downstairs. Cool. Thank you.